Fresh off of firing his country into Euro 2020 with a last gasp winner versus Iceland, the excitement surrounding Dominic Suboslai is at an all-time high. And the rumours of the extremely affordable bio clause of somewhere in the region of 25 million euros makes it seem all the more likely that he'll be on the move soon. Now of course, we can't tell you where he's going to, but we can tell you a bit about his background, playing style, and more. Hey, I'm Adrian by the way, and if you're new to Rabona TV and find yourself enjoying this video, then be sure to subscribe so you can find your way back to the channel much more easily for videos like this. Also, I've listed my sources in the description as per usual, and I encourage you to read through some of the articles I've included, namely one by Ben Bocic from First Time Finish, who collaborated with me for this video. Do me a favor and check out First Time Finish, linked in the description. They were extremely helpful. You'll see that Ben's knowledge was invaluable for this collaboration, and they're creating some great football content for your reading pleasure. Check them out, follow them on Twitter, tell them Adrian says hello. All right, no more preamble. Let's dive into Dominic's early life and youth career, the name he's made for himself at the international level, and finally, his time with Salzburg, including what you can expect of his playstyle and why he's so sought after. Let's try to pronounce some Hungarian names. Dominik Suboslai was born on October 25th, 2000 in Székesfehérvár, Hungary. After building itself up as an industry town with plenty of factories that employed its citizens, it most recently has become the hub for various multinational companies within Hungary, such as Ford, Philips, and IBM. Dominic's father, Jolt Suboslai, was also a professional footballer, and later a coach for Videoten, the club now known as Fahirvar. And so a football was never very far from sight in their household. Ben Bacic from First Time Finish goes further. Dominic always says that he never had a proper childhood growing up. When all his friends were going to the cinema or just playing out outside, he, he was on a pitch playing football every single day and uh, training with his dad one-on-one -on -one or with Phoenix Gold, the academy his dad founded. And uh, that was basically second home. After school, he'd go there, he'd train, and uh, that was pretty much his childhood growing up. Quite clearly, football was his obsession from a young age, and his father's academy, Phoenix Gold, employed some interesting coaching practices, all in the name of technique and creating good habits on the pitch, things that have contributed greatly to the type of player that Dominic is today. One of these techniques was to use colored headbands to divide up the teams for scrimmages, as opposed to using colored practice bibs that they'd pull over their tops. Why? To always encourage players to look up before making passes in order to have a clear picture of their surroundings when making a pass, instead of just relying on their peripheral vision. Another one is holding golf balls in their hands to discourage players from putting each other's shirts. So you had headbands on to ensure that you were always making a pass to who you intended to, let alone had great awareness of what's going on around you, a strength of Dominic's now, and the PS, the resistance. If you've seen Dominic Suboslai play before, then you will have noticed how good he is at dribbling his way out of cul-de-sacs, and how smooth he looks with the ball at his feet, without a reliance on pace to beat his opponents. Well, this could be, at least in some way, attributed to how his father ran the training at Phoenix Gold. The most important one is he only worked with 12 or 13 kids in every age group. So it's a very small group. They have small seven-a-side pitches. So it was a very small area with a small group of kids. And that way he really had the chance to focus on player development and getting the technical aspects right. Because, you know, in a small pitch, you really have to be technical, be good at dribbling. So it's fair to say that there was like a high emphasis on the uh, on technique, on you know getting out of tight corners, etc., and that sort of led into the player that Dominic became later in his career. De definitely. I mean, you can see it now, can't you? Like his his first touch is incredible every time he is on the ball. And of course, playing into the idea that Dominic is a determined, technique-driven football player, his father notes that Dominic would practice his free kicks on a daily basis, hitting anywhere from 100 to 200 practice free kicks per day, taking inspiration from Cristiano Ronaldo, who famously, at Manchester United and then Real Madrid, would stay after practice to practice free kicks over and over and over again. Funnick Gold, with Dominic in their ranks playing as a midfielder, surprised plenty of far more established European clubs when they came up against them. But with his great performances at Fundex Gold, in which he was undoubtedly the star of the club, it was a matter of time before he was noticed by not only his country, but foreign clubs. Playing for Hungary's U15 side, 
RB Salzburg noticed the young attacking midfielder from Sekesh Fahirvar, and with the guidance of his father, Dominic signed with the Austrian club, a club now renowned for finding talent and fostering it. Now, RB Salzburg, like plenty of clubs across Europe, have a feeder club, or a farm team, if you will, where most of their youth goes to develop in a lower league, similarly to Real Madrid's Castilla or Barcelona B. These clubs are ineligible for promotion. In Salzburg's case, it's a club in Austria's second highest division called FC Liefering. The two clubs have been linked since 2012. Suboslai was first sent there upon signing with RB Salzburg in 2016. Now, just a side note, he did have a brief stint with MTK Budapest from 2015 to 2016, but in 2016, he moved to Salzburg via Liefering. He was often playing against players a year or two his senior back in Hungary and still comfortably one of the best players on the pitch. But but in Austria, things were vastly different, with plenty more competition and a much more intense training regime that Dominic wasn't really used to. At least at first, because as Bocic says, his confidence is one of his best assets, and no doubt helped navigate this time in his career. It's his uh, first or second training session, and uh, Salzburg under-19 captain um, sort of ganged up on him and was pulling his bib and stuff. At the end of the training session, uh, it wasn't, you know, Dominic coming off worse, but the Salzburg player with a bleeding gun because uh, Dominic just kind of, you know, showed, showed him that he was there. And that really impressed the sporting director and everyone at the club. You know, it showed that he wanted to fight and he really wanted that spot in the team. All the while, he was starting to build his status on the international stage. And as Bocic notes, it started during the U17 European Championship qualifiers. He scored a last minute winner against Norway. It was a last gasp winner, like outside the box, first time into the top corner. And that managed to qualify Hungary for the under 17 European Championships for the first time in over a decade. A last minute winner to qualify for a European Championship sounds far too familiar, no? So he clearly has had ice in his veins from a young age. Well, he's still quite young, let's be real, but from an even younger age. And he proved that further two years later that he is not a player who lets the occasion get to him. At the age of 18 in 2018, on his senior team debut for Hungary, Subos Lai was thrown into a midfield battle against Ivan Rakitic, then Ballon d'Or winner Luka Modric, and Marcelo Brozovic. And he absolutely bossed that game. You don't see that kind of performance from an 18-year-old in international football. And he, Hungary actually won the game 2-1. Major upset. After that, he was just a regular in the, in the first team from the moment he was 18. And uh, absolutely loved and adored by all the fans. He has a god status, pretty much, because Hungary haven't had a player of his quality uh, for a very long time, probably 30, 40 years. Okay, so why has the club you support been so obsessed with Dominic Subaslai? Let's start with some basics. You'll get the most out of Subaslai in an attacking midfield position, and he often favors drifting to the left. He has played as a left midfielder before, and even according to Bocic, has experienced playing as a holding midfielder. For example, at under 15 level and under 17 level, he often played as a holding midfielder for Hungary, as a number six, uh, you know, spraying passes, because he's quite good at that. But I think defensively, he's not quite at the level where he could play as a number six. So his best role is as an attacking midfielder, as a number 10, or as a sort of number eight, part of a midfield three, where he has the freedom to roam, spray passes, go forward, you know, shoot. Yeah, that's probably his best asset. I think physically, he still needs to improve and he's working on that. Okay, take note, future clubs. In a previous interview, Dominic himself noted that plenty of people liken his style to that of Sergei Milinkovic Savic or Tony Cruz, but as his play has developed, as he's been able to exhibit the technique that he developed at his father's academy, Bocic thinks that his play is akin to two players who play and have played in Manchester. I think in terms of his shooting technique, lots of similarities with Ronaldo. It's very similar. But in terms of playing style, he's more of a De Bruyne type, you know? A number 10 who likes to roam in front of the defense, just spray passes, create chances, shoot and score, usually. Yeah, I think De Bruyne is 
the closest comparison I can make. Now, I didn't include this from our conversation, but we both would like to stress that in likening him to someone, we aren't saying that they are the next De Bruyne or anything like that, as we like to distance ourselves from those kinds of claims, especially amongst developing players. But just to give you an idea so you can visualize the kind of play style he has, it can be helpful. Okay, anyway. While he broke out during the 2018-19 season, it was the 2019-20 season in which he really exploded. With 30 goal involvements from 40 appearances across all competitions, 2020 has undoubtedly been his best year as a professional. In the Austrian Bundesliga alone, since the return from the COVID-enforced pandemic, Subas Lai was involved in 18 goals from 11 matches to close out the season, and he picked up from where he left off for the 2020-21 season. In the new season, there has been just two matches that he has failed to register either a goal or an assist, one of which he was subbed on with less than 30 minutes to go. In the Austrian Bundesliga, he scored once, but supplied goals to his teammates with seven assists. In the Champions League, he's made his mark with some stunning goals, and in the Austrian Cup, he got a hat-trick of assists in Salzburg's 3-0 win over St. Poulton. It's this kind of form that has truly catapulted his reputation to unprecedented heights in the last few months. Yes, links to Arsenal and the like have been rife for a while, but now it seems as if every club across Europe is throwing their hat or offer into Suboslai's ring. I mean, with the help of Ben, we could go on and on for a long time about Dominic Suboslai, but for now, I think that should give you a good idea of who he is, the environment that shaped the player he is today, and what he's achieved at such a young age. Again, be sure to check out First Time Finish linked below, and another thank you to them in general, and Ben in particular, for the help. My name is Adrian, drop a like if you learned something new, and we hope to see you in the next video. Ciao!